So let's take a look at another example where we find the total response of a system. This one's even a little bit more complicated because we're not just handed a differential equation to analyze. We're actually going to analyze this RLC circuit right here. And as a first step, we need to come up with an equation, a system model for the system itself. So here is the RLC circuit. It consists of a voltage source, F of T. There's an inductor, a resistor, a capacitor, all with the given values. And then we have a voltage, Vc of T, here across the capacitor. And then Y of T is the current flowing in this loop here. And Y of T is what we're going to consider kind of the output of the system. This is the equation or the quantity, Y of T, that we would like to relate to F of T and then analyze the system accordingly. So for the problem, we're going to find the total response of the current Y of T. And we're going to find it under the following assumptions and conditions. So first of all, we're going to assume that we have an input F of T that is equal to this. And our initial conditions are zero at time minus zero for the current. And the voltage across the capacitor at time zero minus has a value of five. So these are some of our initial conditions. So as a first step, we need to come up with a system equation that ties F of T and Y of T together. So that's not too bad. Just some basic circuit analysis will give us that. If we do a KVL, a Kirchhoff voltage loop, we know that the sum of the voltages has to equal zero. So if you move the F of T to the left, we know that F of T has to equal the voltage drop across the inductor plus the voltage drop across the resistor plus the voltage drop across the capacitor. So this equation has to be true. And then what do we know about VL of T? How is the voltage across the inductor related to the current going through it? Well, for inductors, the voltage across an inductor is L times the derivative of the current. For a resistor, a resistor voltage is equal to R times the current flowing through it. So this is just R times Y. And then for a capacitor, its voltage is an integral of the current that's flowed through it. So Vc of T is actually equal to this. So at this point, I'm, I'm going in the right direction. I have an equation that relates Y quantities to F quantities. So that's definitely a step in the right direction. What I'm going to go ahead and do now since I like to analyze differential equations, not equations with integrals in them, I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative of both sides of this equation so I can get rid of all the integrals. So I'm going to take the derivative of everything in here. So when I take the derivative of f of t, I can think of that as df of t. I already had a derivative right here, so now I have a second order derivative, so hence d squared, plus r d y of t plus 1 over C, Y of T. When I differentiate the integral, it just goes away and turns into just Y of T. So this is now a differential equation. And if I go back and look at my circuit, I was actually given values for all of these components. L was equal to 1, R was equal to 3, and C was equal to 0.5. So if I replace all those values, and I can also factor out the Y of T, that's common to all these terms, I end up with D squared, plus 3d plus 2. So now this equation is very much in the format that I like to analyze. Here's my polynomial in d multiplying y of t. Here's my polynomial in d multiplying f. So I have a system equation. All right, let's talk about initial conditions now. Because the initial conditions were specified not completely in terms of y, which I'm trying to solve for. We had some initial conditions related to the voltage across the capacitor. All right, so what's going on here? For time less than zero, our input is equal to zero, right? Because the input had a unit step on it. So for time less than zero, we have no input. So that means for time less than zero, really what I have is this system of equa equation, right? If I go back to my system equation, the sum of the voltages has to equal zero. F of t has to equal the sum of the voltages across all the components. For time less than zero, this is really my zero input response. So that's why I called it y0 of t. Replacing all the L's, R's, and um, quantities such as that with the values 1 and 3. And then also, what is the derivative of y0? It's just y dot. I have this equation. Now let's go ahead and step up to time getting closer and closer to when the input actually turns on. This equation right here is good for all time less than zero. Zero minus is definitely less than zero, so I can go ahead and evaluate it at that particular time. 
So I have this equation. What do I know about the total response and the zero input response for times less than zero? We know that they match up, right? Because this is not impacted by the input at all. So we always know that for times less than zero, y matches up with y zero. So that is definitely true. Plus the same thing here. We know that for times less than zero, the total response always matches up with the zero input response. And then what about this? I was actually given this in the problem, wasn't I? I was. I was actually given both this value and this value in the problem. So initially, the current is zero at time zero minus. And initially, the voltage across the capacitor, we were told, was equal to five at time zero minus. So now I have this equation, which tells me if I solve for the derivative of my total response at time zero minus, that it has to equal minus five. So this is another condition that I'm going to need. It basically by writing down my initial starting equation and evaluating it at time less than zero, for which I knew the input was zero, I was able to tie together some quantities of the total response with the zero input response and solve for another condition on my total response. I didn't have this condition before, and now I do. So at this point, we've already done a lot of work, and we're really to the point where we started the previous example. At this point, I now have a differential equation that represents my system, and I now also have all the initial conditions that I need. So we'll go ahead and stop this particular video right there, and we'll continue working the problem in the next video. Now that we've kind of have the problem set up to start with solving for the zero input response, the impulse response, the zero state response, all those other pieces that we now need to work.